tonight. Firm warnings. US President Biden contacts Israel's Netanyahu with growing restlessness over the onslaught in Gaza. Israel's top ally now joining the rest of the West in calling for an easing of the conflict. Putin speaks. Following his landslide election victory, Russia's re-elected President Vladimir Putin addresses his populace from Crimea on the 10th anniversary of its annexation, ignoring the West's complaints. Trump in trouble. Time is ticking as Trump's legal team fails to secure a bond on his massive $454 million judgment in New York, leaving the former president's assets vulnerable. And hiker heroics. Man's best friend needs a helping hand too sometimes. Here's how one runner saved a pup in need. All that and more as World News Tonight starts right now. This is Ala Vedrana World News Tonight. Reporting from Colombo, here's Anuradhi Vikramasinghe. A very good evening and thank you for joining us on Tuesday's edition of World News Tonight. We hope you're ready to buckle down to get a full rundown on key events that developed across the globe over the course of today. Without any further ado, we start with updates on the Israel-Palestine conflict. Now, according to a UN-backed report, famine is imminent and likely to occur by May in northern Gaza and could spread across the enclave by July after more than five months of war that have shattered the Palestinian territory and cut off supplies. The Integrated Food Security Phase Classification, or IPC, said on Monday that it expects famine to hit the north of the Gaza Strip between now and May and that the number of people experiencing catastrophic hunger has risen to 1.1 million. That's around half of the population. Here's UN chief Antonio Guterres. Palestinians in Gaza are enduring horrifying levels of hunger and suffering. This is the highest number of people facing catastrophic hunger ever recorded by the Integrated Food Security Classification System anywhere, anytime. This is an entirely man-made disaster and the report makes clear that it can be halted. Five months of war have shattered the Palestinian territory, killed thousands and cut off supplies. The Global Hunger Monitor said shortages in parts of the Gaza Strip have already far exceeded famine levels, adding that mass death is now imminent without an immediate ceasefire and a surge of food into areas cut off by fighting. Also on Monday, EU Foreign Policy Chief Joseph Borrell said Israel is provoking a famine, a claim Israel rejects. Starvation is used as a weapon of war. Yes, starvation is used as a weapon of war. Let's... Let's say that. Israel's military assault on Hamas-governed Gaza has flattened the enclave and, according to Gaza's health ministry, killed over 31,000 people. It has also led to accusations of genocide being probed in the world court. Meanwhile, on Israel's front, Joe Biden had his first phone call with Israeli leader Benjamin Netanyahu in two months, where he told him an Israeli operation in Rafah would only deepen anarchy in Gaza. Tensions have risen between Israel and the U.S., its top ally, over Netanyahu's handling of the war in Gaza. U.S. National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan said later that Biden told Netanyahu Israel needed a coherent strategy rather than to smash its way into the war-torn enclave. A major ground operation there would be a mistake. It would lead to more innocent civilian deaths, worsen the already dire humanitarian crisis, deepen the anarchy in Gaza, and further isolate Israel internationally. On Sunday, Netanyahu had reaffirmed his pledge to push into Rafah in Gaza's southern tip, where more than half of the territory's 2.3 million residents have been sheltering to escape fighting farther north. However, after Biden's call, the White House said Israel agreed to send teams to Washington to discuss the way forward and would not proceed with a Rafah operation before the talks happened this week or the next. Meanwhile, Israel claims it killed 20 militants in a deadly clash at Al-Shifa Hospital in Gaza City early Monday. In video from Israeli forces, Israeli soldiers could be seen firing their weapons and moving into the compound. Gunshots and explosions were heard in eyewitness footage of the raid, which Israel says also resulted in the death of a top Hamas operative. 
Israel says more than 200 terrorist suspects were apprehended in Al Shifa. Gaza's Hamas run health ministry said the Israeli raid led to multiple casualties and set off a fire in one of the buildings. And an update on the Russian elections now. Russian President Vladimir Putin held his first speech since his landslide presidential election victory. Marking the 10th anniversary of the annexation of Crimea, he called the occupied territory of Ukraine return territory and vowed to move forward together. However, the elections received major criticism from the international community, with some calling the result illegal. For more on this, we have other than World News special correspondent Simashi Pereira from Moscow in Russia. Simashi. Is on arriving in Crimea, Putin delivered his first speech since his election victory, where he called the occupied territory of Ukraine return territory. He also noted the four occupied territories of Ukraine that took part in the recent presidential elections. He relayed, mentioning no Russia and Donbas, that people who lived there during the spring expressed their will to return to their family as well. Their way to the homeland was much more brave and tragic, but in the end they did it, adding that it is a big event in the history of the country. However, the Russian president election was met with heavy condemnation by international community. There were also claims that the election was illegal, citing issues such as fact that transparent ballot boxes were used and the voting was conducted in four occupied territories of Ukraine. China, India and North Korea offered congratulations. Back to you, Rani. All right, thank you very much. That was other than a world news special correspondent, Simashi Pereira from Moscow in Russia. And on some economic updates tonight, Japan is ushering in a new era of monetary policy. The Bank of Japan ended eight years of negative interest rates and other remnants of its unorthodox policy, making a historic shift away from a focus of reflating growth with decades of massive monetary stimulus. Japan's central bank ended eight years of negative interest rates on Tuesday, bringing in a new era of monetary policy in the country. It's the first rate hike in 17 years, but the Bank of Japan is keeping rates around zero, moving cautiously amid the country's fragile economic recovery. Japan is aiming to shift away from a focus on reflating growth with decades of massive monetary stimulus, so the decision was widely expected. Tokyo's central bank is the last in the world to exit negative rates, ending a time where global policymakers used cheap money and unconventional monetary tools to try and prop up growth. The BOJ on Tuesday also scrapped a policy aimed at capping long-term interest rates around zero, known as yield curve control. Though the bank said it will keep buying broadly the same amount of government bonds as before and ramp up purchases in case yields rise rapidly. A spike in bond yields would make funding Japan's huge public debt more expensive. The country's public debt is already twice the size of its GDP and the largest among advanced economies. Analysts say Tuesday's announcement will have a very small actual impact on the economy. The central bank is expected to keep monetary conditions loose. And no major hike in household mortgage rates or funding costs are expected. But an end to the world's last remaining provider of cheap funds could jolt global financial markets. After amassing overseas investments in search of yields, Japanese investors may now look to shift money back to their home country. Meanwhile, China is seeing a bit of trouble on the economic front. Despite Chinese officials announcing upbeat numbers on the economy, the sagging property sector remains a drag on data as well as wider confidence about the country's recovery, even though the factory output and retail sales beat expectations. The National Bureau of Statistics said that factory output and retail sales did better than expected in January to February. It's a solid start for 2024 and offers some relief to policymakers. At a news conference, the bureau's spokesperson said macroeconomic policies have helped China recover, but warned of challenges ahead amid external uncertainties. The data released show industrial output rose 7% in the first two months of the year. That's above the 5% increase forecast in a poll of analysts. It's also the quickest growth in almost two years. Retail sales rose 5.5%, that's slower than December figures, but still beat expectations. 
property slid 9% from the same period this time last year, it's not nearly as bad as the 24% plunge in December, but is still far from levels of stability. Let's go for a short commercial break. Stay tuned for more key global updates. We'll be right back. Welcome back. We resume with updates on Trump's legal troubles. Donald Trump's efforts to secure a bond to cover a $454 million judgment in the New York civil fraud case was rejected by 30 surety companies, his lawyers have said, inching him closer to the possibility of having his properties seized. Lawyers for Donald Trump on Monday said the former president has so far failed to raise the money needed to secure a bond in his New York civil fraud case. The bond would allow Trump to appeal the more than $450 million he owes in penalties and interest, which a judge ordered him to pay last month for misstating property values to dupe lenders and insurers. Trump must either find the cash or post a bond to prevent the state's authorities from seizing his properties while he appeals the judge's decision. Trump's lawyers urged an appeals court to delay enforcement of the judgment, arguing the amount was excessive. They said Trump had so far approached 30 companies to obtain a bond, but that all have said no. Trump's lawyers included a statement from one of the brokers hired to help get a bond, who said obtaining one for the full amount, quote, is not possible, noting that many companies that issue bonds won't provide one above $100 million and were willing to accept only cash or securities, not real estate, as collateral. Trump earlier this month posted a bond of nearly $92 million to cover an $83 million defamation verdict for the writer E. Jean Carroll while he appeals that judgment. Trump denied wrongdoing in the civil fraud case, as he has in all of his current legal battles, which include four criminal indictments. And on the road to the White House tonight, we have more polls for you. By November 5th general election, Biden will be almost 82 and Trump 78. So far, Biden's net approval is negative 16.8, with 55.4% disapproving and 38.6% approving. Trump's net favorability fares far better at negative 9.7 with 52.5 percent unfavorable and 42.8 percent favorable. Recently both Biden's and Trump's ratings have dipped with Biden's State of the Union address making no major difference. Biden's net approval is worse for any other president at this age of their presidency since scientific polling began in Harry Truman's presidency. Take a look. There isn't yet an aggregate for general election polls. But while there are three recent national polls that give Biden one to two point leads, the large majority of national polls have Trump ahead, usually by low single digit margins. The national popular vote does not decide presidency. Instead, there are 538 electoral votes distributed among the states based mostly on population, and it takes 270 to win. It is expected that this system would probably favor Trump more than the national popular vote margin. In 2016, Trump received 8% of the black vote according to the exit polls the highest level support by black voters for any Republican since George Bush in 2000. By the 2020 US presidential election, support for Trump among black voters has surged to 12%. And while the current opinion polls vary, a recent survey shows that if the elections were held today, 17% of black voters would vote for Donald Trump, while 20% said that they would vote for someone other than Trump or Biden. A significant increase. And on some royal updates tonight, Kate, Britain's Princess of Wales, has been shown looking fit and healthy in a front page screenshot of the first video taken of her since she underwent surgery two months ago. The picture of Kate alongside her husband and heir to the throne, Prince William, was splashed on the front page of the popular tabloid Sun. For more on this, we have other day on the world news special correspondent Clifford Pereira from Yorkshire in the UK. Clifford? Yes, I'm right. Kate spent two weeks in hospital in January after having what office said was a successful parent surgery for a non-cancerous but unspecified condition. Other than a couple of blurry pictures, she has not been seen in public since appearing with other members of royal family on Christmas Day. The couple's office Kingston's Palace had no comment on the video. 
her spokesman has said Kate was recovering well but was not expected to return to official duties until after Easter which falls on March 31st. Meanwhile, British officials refuted the rumors surrounding the alleged death of King Charles III, heavily reported by multiple media outlets early in the day as many Russian media outlets announced the death of the UK King. The British embassy in Ukraine issued a response saying that the news about the death of King Charles III is fake. Back to you, Anradi. All right, thank you very much. That was other than the World News Special Correspondent Clifford Pereira from Yorkshire in the UK. The violence and chaos in Haiti continues to see relentless escalation. Gangs attacked two upscale neighborhoods in Haiti's capital early in a rampage that left at least a dozen people dead in surrounding areas. Collective grief and fear have overwhelmed Pétionville on the outskirts of Port-au-Prince. Several lifeless bodies were found in the streets on Monday after the neighborhood came under attack. These victims were people who were just looking to feed their children in the evening before going home. They're the ones who come home late. Among them, there are public transport drivers who have left more than five children behind. I recognize some of them. While the details of what took place are still unclear, Many locals say that armed bandits had been spreading terror in the area since the morning. Last night around 11 p.m. as we were sitting here, two young boys suddenly appeared and opened fire on our brothers. They didn't address anyone. They just came up and started shooting. It's one of the latest incidents in the ongoing political and humanitarian crisis that is raging in Haiti after a recent surge in gang violence plunged the nation into chaos. According to UNICEF, Haitians trapped by violence are suffering from famine and malnutrition, and humanitarian aid is hard to deliver. At an emergency meeting last week, representatives from the UN, United States and the Caribbean, among others, created a blueprint for Haitians to form a transitional authority, which would govern the country until elections can be held. They hope the authority will lead the country out of crisis, but humanitarian groups fear it is sliding towards civil war. And now some concerning updates on the global climate. All but one of the 100 cities with the world's worst air pollution last year were in Asia, according to a new report, with the climate crisis playing a pivotal role in bad air quality that is risking the health of billions of people worldwide. The vast majority of these cities were in India and all exceeded the World Health Organization's air quality guidelines by more than 10 times, according to the report by IQ Air, which tracks the air quality worldwide. The study looks specifically at fine particulate matter, or PM2.5, which is the tiniest pollutant but also the most dangerous. Only 9% of more than 7,800 cities analyzed globally recorded air quality that met WHO standard which says average annual levels of PM2.5 should not exceed 5 micrograms per cubic meter. When inhaled, PM2.5 travels deep into the lung tissues where it can enter the bloodstream. It comes from sources like combustion of fossil fuel, dust storms and wildfires, and has been linked to asthma, heart and lung disease, cancer and other respiratory illnesses, as well as cognitive impairment in children. Across India, 1.3 billion people, or 96% of the population, live with air quality seven times higher than WHO guidelines, according to the report. Let's go in for a short commercial break. More world news on the other side. Stay tuned. Welcome back. Tonight, we see a fitting tribute paid to an absolutely adored franchise in the form of currency. The Royal Mint announced that the beloved Star Wars Millennium Falcon has been immortalized on a collectible UK coin. The Starship is the first in the new four-coin series dedicated to the Star Wars franchise's iconic vehicles. The coin, which comes in a 50 pence and ounce range, has a lenticular feature that tilts in the light to reveal a silhouette of the Millennium Falcon and the Rebel Alliance starboard symbol. The Royal Mint will also launch its first bullion bars inspired by the Star Wars galaxy in time for Star Wars Day on May 4th. And finally tonight, 
If you were in a perilous position, would you believe you would have the capacity to help out another human in need? Well, if not a human, how about a furry friend? Well, one hiker decided to take the risk to save the life of a precious pup. Take a look. It's no easy feat to climb this treacherous cliff. One mistake could spell death. Sergio Fabian is aware of the potential danger with its sheer drops on both sides. The 44-year-old marathon runner trains by climbing up and down the mountain on the island of Oahu in Hawaii. But what he encountered truly tested his strength and agility. On an evening run as he neared the summit of the 1,000-foot cliff, this is what he saw, a terrified dog close to death unable to come down by herself. Oh, are you okay, girl? No. I was floored. I was just taken by surprise. She was just shivering, one eye was shut. If climbing the cliff is a challenge, just imagine coming down, carrying a 45-pound dog. I'm gonna get her down. I knew right away that I needed to get her down, and, and I knew that I could. If anyone could pull off the feet, it's Sergio. He's a world-class athlete, running, biking. He's even appeared in a Subaru commercial. I was able to hook her with one arm while I was scaling the cliff with the other arm and kind of having her wedged against me and resting on me. I don't know who the, whose girl this is, but uh, we gotta find out. I'm just taking a rest in between. I'm gonna take her down. Sergio had a major concern as they were making their way down. I was really scared that she was gonna freak out and squirm right at the worst possible time putting my life at, at risk. After 45 minutes, mission accomplished. The dog was lapping up water and then curled up in a blanket after a nice meal. Oh, she needs some medical attention. When news spread that Sergio had rescued the dog, the owner came forward. Turns out the dog has a name, Stevie. Now back at home, thanks to a guy named Sergio. Now that is a true definition of heroics. Stevie was one lucky boy to have come across Sergio. Well, that's all the stories we have for you tonight. We'll see you again tomorrow with more updates on the happenings of the world. Thank you for watching. Have a good night.